This is our super duper topic for projectile motion. And if you can do this, you get an automatic A for the entire unit. So this is worth trying, but it's not easy. We launch uh, like a cannonball at 20 meters per second out of the cannon at an angle of 40 degrees. So this is the angle. It falls a height of 50 meters. How far away does it hit this target? What we're going to do is we're going to break this up into two times. Imagining this level ground extends, I'm going to break that off and call this flight time one. And then the time it takes to fall down this path, to fall this 50 meters, I'm going to call time two. And then I can use total time to find distance. So let's go through our steps. And I'm going to take a couple pictures. So this is going to be step one. All right, so step one on your notes. Solve four components. Vx and Vy. All right, so we have of this 20 meters per second, how much is going upward? And of this 20 meters per second, how much is horizontal motion? And here's how we do it. To solve for velocity in the x direction, we use cosine angle adjacent over hypotenuse. So if we turn this into a triangle, This is what we're solving for. So this becomes cosine angle 40 equals, we don't know, the hypotenuse is 20 meters per second. So over 20. We're going to move this over here for algebra. 20 cosine 40 equals velocity in the x. Our answer 20 times cosine 40 equals 15.3 meters per second. So of this 20 degrees, it's traveling 15.3 meters per second forward. To find Vy, we use sine theta opposite over hypotenuse. So this becomes 20. We move that over there. Sine 40. And that becomes 12.8 meters per second. So we know this upward is 12.8 meters per second. So that's part one. The next thing that we're going to do is we always can use the upward motion. This one helps us find time. So we're going to use this a lot. And at the very end, this one always helps us find distance. Okay, step two on your notes, we're going to use the initial velocity upward, 12.8, I think, let me check. Yep. We're going to use this initial velocity upward to find this time, imagining that the level ground extends all the way out. And there's some important things to know. We know the initial upward velocity is 12.8. We know acceleration is negative 9.8. We don't know time. And we actually know the final velocity coming down. It turns out that at any point, if you throw something up at 10 meters per second, when it comes back down and you catch it, it's going to be going negative 10 meters per second. So there's this equal and opposite mirroring. So it goes up at 12.8. That means this final velocity right here is negative 12.8. So as it hits this imaginary ground to stop this time, the final velocity is negative 12.8. The formula we use is velocity equals velocity initial plus a times t. Negative 12.8 equals 12.8 
plus negative 9.8 times time. And then let's do some math. Move this first. Cancels. And we get 6, 5, and 2. Negative 25.6 equals negative 9.8 times time. The last step is to divide by 9.8. My pen's not working. Ah, the program stopped. Please. So when we divide, we get a time of 2.6 seconds. So it takes 2.6 seconds, given this upward velocity, to go over this arc. Now it's time for the longest step three. In step three, you can write it right up here in the top. This is find time to fall 50 meters. The challenge is, at this point right here, once it technically starts falling this 50 meters, it already has some downward velocity of a negative 12.8 meters per second. It was thrown up at this point at positive 12.8. So we're going to call this the initial velocity downward. We also know that the acceleration downward is negative 9.8. We know that the height is 50. What we need is this velocity final. What's this impact velocity right here? So we have v squared equals our starting velocity plus 2 times a times y. So I'm going to take these numbers and go to a new page. Alright, so what are we doing? We're trying to find if it has an initial downward velocity of 12.8, what would its velocity be at contact if the height is 50 meters? Because we end up, we need to find time, but we need to know velocity final, velocity initial, plus acceleration. We need to use this, so we need to find this guy first. Which we need to find how fast is it going right here. So velocity final squared equals velocity initial squared plus 2 times acceleration times time. All of these are going downward. So technically they're all negative. Sorry, that's a change in height. Height is going down. Acceleration is going down. So we could technically have a bunch of negative signs out here, but they're all the same. So we can just get rid of them all. So this becomes 12.8 squared plus 2, we can just call this 9.8, and we can just call this 50, not negative 50 and negative 9.8. So 12.8 squared equals 163.8. This stuff here becomes 980. 980 plus 163.8 equals... 1,143.8. The last step, don't forget it, is to root both sides. So final velocity equals 33.8 meters per second. And now we can plug it into our last formula. 33.8 equals 12.8 plus 9.8 times what we really want is time to fall minus 12.8 minus 12.8 is 21 equals 9.8 times time divide by 9.8 and we get our time of 2.1 seconds If we go back to the original, it 
time 2 equals 2.8 seconds. Time 1 is 2.6 seconds. So now we're ready for our last step. Our final step velocity in the x, displacement in the x, and total time 2.6 plus 2.8. This we need to find. It's our answer. Velocity in the x we found, I think it was 15.2. So what we have is this. We have some forward motion. Regardless of the fall, we know that it's moving at 15.3 meters per second. And if we know the time is 5.4 seconds, then we can calculate how much distance it covered going this fast at this time. So to find forward distance, you need forward velocity and for how long was it going. So that's what we're going to do. Velocity in the x equals displacement over time. 15.3 equals we don't know over 5.4 and then we're going to bring it up here. 5.4, 15.3 equals velocity in the x. Total distance is 82.6 meters. Congratulations. So there'll be a practice for this online. If you can do this problem, you can do everything for the entire unit, so why don't we just give you credit for the entire unit, every homework assignment, every test topic. Good luck.